This interview is for information only and should not be considered as investment advice or a recommendation to buy shares in the company featured. Welcome to this stock box interview. Back to the research talks here from Stockbox with Alan Green. Alan, how have you been? You had a little biking holiday. Well, uh, I'm actually going on the biking holiday this weekend, although the weather is pretty horrendous. Uh, but uh, I've decided uh, instead of um, uh, my normal route, I'm, I'm actually going to go go to Norfolk, where my family came from many years ago. And, okay. Um, because the weather forecast there is good for the weekend, so I'm going this weekend. But we went to Devon last week, had fantastic weather, had a great time. Uh, and then had a had a bit of a problem on the way back. The car broke down. Uh, oh. on a, on a, yes, and um, and uh, uh, I won't go into details, but it took us um, about twelve hours to get home. But uh, anyway, oh. got home. We got home. Oh, and was good. No. Okay. Well, good. Good. Yes, Norfolk's lovely, isn't it? Um, I've been been there once myself, but um, I did enjoy it. Um, it's fairly nice. It'd be quite a nice um, ride in. I'd have thought. Um, yeah. Getting into it's- yeah. It's a lovely part of the world, and um, and uh, yeah, you know, I'm pretty pretty familiar with the uh, with the coastline and the and yeah. uh, you know the the layout of the county. So I'm going to enjoy just spinning around and uh, seeing some old sites. And, um, yeah. Good, good stuff, good stuff. Well, as we sort of have concluded another week here, and yet again we've seen uh, discounted placings coming in. Um, it could get worse. I mean, in my ten years of investing, so since 2013, actually, so it's 11 years now. Um, yep. I've never seen um, so many discounted placings, but then I spoke to someone else and they said, wait till it gets to 70% discount. <laughs> so I don't know, I forget who I was talking to. Yeah. Oh, I think it was, uh, yeah, I think it might have been Mark Sale from um, First Class, actually, when, you know, when companies had to raise a lot of money. Um, yeah. Actually, no, apologies, it wasn't, it wasn't, it was uh, It was Doc Holiday. it was Mike Whitlow from ECR talking about, yeah. he's been, you know, he's been investing longer than me and, yeah. When you start to see those real big placings, you know the bottom is in. And Mike did say actually in an interview yesterday that them, you know, when everyone's saying, "Oh, it's really bad," you know, when it's all a bit like sheep, and ninety, ninety-five percent of people are saying, "Oh, it's really bad," nothing's worth investing in. Well, that's the time to be parting with your money, not when everyone's shouting from the rooftops. So um, that's the time to I think, buy, yeah. I, yeah, indeed. And as I say, in my ten years, I've not seen, I've not seen this many discounted placings or IPOs struggling to get away. So we're possibly very very much nearing the bottom in in this sector here um but we're going to cover today a couple of miners uh clontarf voyager life um of course in helium and pool bags or pool bag farmer so did oh. you want to start off with clontarf alan lithium lithium brines lithium brines indeed um so this was this is a really interesting uh play i i looked at the interview and I've, I've done, just done some digging around but Clontarf Energy of course is uh, listed on AIM uh, currently trading at 0.05p giving you the market capitalization of just three and a half million shares were traded as high as uh, 0.15p on the year and as low as uh, 0.01p but of course um, the company has just raised 450,000 uh, at 0.45p, so it's uh, now at a slight premium to that raise price. But um, Quantaf is uh, uh, a an exploration and production company in the emerging lithium market. Um, it had some oil interest in Ghana, but it's now focused on Bolivia, um, and it's focused on clean lithium brine. What is clean lithium brine? You might ask. Well, um, the clean lithium brine is is uh, uh, is, is a measure of the purity of the brine, uh, and that's something that battery manufacturers are very uh, conscious of and uh, will seek out where they possibly can. And a lot of these supplies uh, are are dirty; they're, they're they're contaminated. They're not uh, as they should be. Bolivia, where where uh, Clontarf uh, is operating, is is um, has is is renowned for the best clean lithium brine in the world. And of course, this is produced from Solaris or salt lakes. Um, uh, and it, it is thought that by the end of this decade, um, uh, as battery manufacturers uh, uh, seek to source uh, the uh, this um, 
the, the, the best possible lithium carbon equivalent, um, that uh, they will pay a premium, possibly up to 30% for clean lithium brine. So that's, a, that's an important note to understand from the outset. So Bolivia is in the process of a restructuring. Um, the company or, or the government uh, itself is reforming um, the export laws there to make it easier for companies to come in and indeed um, there, there's, there, there has been an international convocatoria in Bolivia. This is uh, involving the EU uh, Commission with whom the chairman David uh, Horgan is, is very closely involved um, and uh, this commission has been uh, speaking with the representatives from Bolivian and Argentinian governments uh, in regard to accelerating supply resources, providing funding to uh, develop resources and so on. So. Um, so the, the 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 basic premise at the moment is that obviously Bolivia has the best brine deposits in the world. Um, uh, at the outset, uh, five to eight percent of the revenues generated from any um, sales of lithium will go to local prom- provinces to help develop infrastructure and, of course, education and health, uh, etc. And there is a plan in place. Um, uh, the the team of Klontoff have an agreement with um, a large. Uh, a chemical company uh, in Mumbai. It's a multi-million pound chemical company that's already already working with Tesla. They have a production plant arrangement agreed with this company to process the uh, process the uh, brine uh, once and and the 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 the, uh, the ore once it actually reaches reaches uh, 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 Mumbai. Klontoff currently have. Uh, um, uh, provision for containers uh, to take up to 320 tonnes uh, um, back for processing. Um, the ultimate aim is to produce 150 tonnes of lithium carbon equivalent by 2030. So that's, um, that may not sound like a huge amount, but when it's, uh, when it's of the purest quality, then, then of course that, uh, that, that is going to command a premium. Um, uh, Klontov has already uh, identified um, or been approached by uh, offtake uh, parties. There's a lot of interest in offtake contracts at uh, at the, a premium to the the current spot price. So, um, so, so with with the with the the raise the company has just uh, just completed. Um, the plan is that uh, uh, once the permits have been put into place, uh, the company are going to um, are, are going to uh, uh, build a bespoke pilot plant at uh, one of the Solaris. They have Bolivian experts working for them on the ground there to identify the the the, uh, the Solaris or the Salt Lake for the initial uh, uh, the initial uh, pilot plant. Um, Permits have have been applied for. As soon as those permits are received, uh, then that plant will will be will uh, be uh, taken in. It'll it'll be built. The the uh, the the uh, lithium carbonate uh, will be uh, produced and shipped to Mumbai for processing. And of course, um, uh, assessment in terms of its purity and its quality, and so on. And this is going to take place uh, within a fairly short uh, time frame. Um, it's thought that the plant will be up and operating by mid 2025. So as we stand now, that's about nine months away. And that's not a great deal of time when it comes to getting these things up and running. Obviously, we see, you know, we've spoken about other mining company operations and, and setting up pilot plants and so on. And it has taken a, a lot longer. But David and the team are confident that uh, they can get this up and running by the middle of next year. And so, I, you know, I think with a with the company valued three and a half million, and also with David Horgan's standing uh, and work that he's doing with the EU Commission, of course, uh, uh, all working under Ursula von, uh, von der Leyen, um, it's uh, it, it's an impressive setup. And I think uh, I think uh, once this pilot plant is set up, uh, the the ore is shipped out, and we have an idea of the quality of it. Um, it's opening up really potentially a huge marketplace um, and the fact that there is so much interest already from this convocatoria the you know the the uh, representatives are down there speaking with Bolivia and Argentina to develop these salt lakes uh, makes uh, Klontarf I think a very interesting play with great potential uh, um, in this uh, space.
Well, it's certainly at that point, isn't it, in its journey, getting the sample shipped out to Mumbai for that uh, yeah, initial kind of sample testing and that line from the recent RNS where David said, yeah, they would like to expedite effectively getting a pilot plant at one of these Salars in Bolivia. So definitely at a, at a good um, good moment in, um, in the development cycle for Klontarf. And as you say, David is very... Uh, connected and in tune with everything that's going on politically i know he regularly visits brussels and takes part in different um yeah think think groups uh, with the european union um and of course he, he's mentioned a few times the european union grants that are available so he's definitely the man uh, to be uh, yeah <laughs> getting those kind of uh, elements sorted, the, the grants and the uh, dropping the hurdles, that kind of thing, uh, working with the regulators. So thank you, Alan. Good to get a bit of a picture of Klontarf. Um, I'm just sure we'll talk about that, them Mark. again. Uh, uh, Go on. Yeah, just, just another point on that. Of course, we were talking about uh, this, you know, uh, this uh, raisings and you know, raising money in the market. And I think uh, you yeah. know, the fact that that 450000 was raised at 0.45p, that's pretty much in line with Klontarf's performance um, or share price forms. In fact, it's well ahead of uh, that. That the price uh, or the average price really running through from February. Well, uh, in fact, from the start of the year. So the the shares were trading at uh, just under 0.5 in January, and then hit a low of uh, of. Uh, in fact, 0.16p. So actually, getting that raise away uh, in the current market at 0.45p is pretty mm-hmm. good. So, so you know that that indicates that there's strong investor interest too. And I think, uh, yeah, it, it's 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 at a very good position. And you know, the fact is now that if you go and buy in the open market, you can buy shares pretty much at the same level. So you know that's uh, that mm. that I think gives that does make it very attractive. Indeed. Well, thank you, Alan. So let's talk about Voyage Life and what's been going on, of course, with the helium. Definitely making rapid progress there. We're getting different helium wells retapped. It's it's a fascinating story. This it really is, and of course, Voyage Life is still it's still uh, listed under the name On Aquis. Um, yeah. I mean, there's the share price simply does not reflect the progress and and, and the work that uh, Chairman Nick Tullock, uh, or Chief Executive Nick Tullock and the team have done um, since uh, since this this pivot um, a few months ago. And of course, uh, Voyager have this uh, have have basically taken um, that they, they have an agreement with um, M3 Helium. They've agreed uh, it was agreed on the 27th of June. They entered into an option agreement to acquire the acquire the entire issue share capital of M3 Helium, um, and of course provided M3 with a uh, with a loan at that point to accelerate the uh, the drilling and the fracking process. And there are there are a, a number of assets, of course, in Kansas, the Hugadon Field, North Play. Uh, this the target area has produced 27 trillion cubic feet of helium bearing natural gas. Um, there's a s- substantial Development of infrastructure there, um, and a, a commercial agreement at the with the Jayhawk processing plant, of course, Scout Energy Partners, where the where the the processing is, is taken their process, and then of course um, uh, uh, the, the the earnings come from that. Um, there are 25 further wells in the Hugenfield East play. Uh, uh, one producing well, two others near completion, and then of course Fort Dodge, the Rost well, where there's uh, rates as high as 2.9 million cubic feet of gas per day were tested, uh, with a, 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 a 4.6 helium concentration, which is which is huge, way ahead of uh, commercial levels, which are are, are at uh, about half of that. So uh, this is th- th- this is a very good deal for Voyager, and of course. The, the legacy the legacy assets which are the CBD shops those will be sold off separately and uh, and uh, then of course once that process is complete then then the uh, the the company will become a pure helium uh, company but um, a lot of uh, a lot of progress over the past few weeks so um, so so there was a an asset summary uh, by the company um, uh, back at uh, at the end of July. Um, so uh, obviously we have we have the Carter one and Carter two wells, uh, which are the most recent uh, of, uh, wells to be drilled. But it is the Smith and Nelson wells um, that uh, have really uh, uh, focused attention um, uh, uh, of late. Um, the company is now commenced production in mid- middle of August. It announced that the Smith and Nelson wells uh, are now in 
production uh, and of course what this uh, means for the entity is uh, is cash generation so so the the company uh, as a as a, as a an exploration a gas exploration company is now actually in production uh, producing revenue uh, from that and of course uh, as time goes by we'll have um, a further insight into those earnings but um, but the uh, also also in in August the Ross uh, Roswell uh, was tested again tested by Shamrock gas analysis discovered to contain 5.1 percent helium so even better than that 4.6 uh, percent uh, um, uh, discovered originally um, then of course we uh, we come into September um, and uh, uh, announcement today from the company which I is is great news, I, I think, for everyone involved in the company, and it's particularly great news for Voyager shareholders because it's completely non-dilutive. Um, the the Nielsen well, um, uh, of course, um, uh, has 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 uh, just uh, received one hundred seventy thousand dollars in funding, and that money was raised by local investors and one of the contractors to cover the costs of undertaking a frack. Um, and what they've agreed is uh, they will take a 25% uh, uh, economic interest in the well. So, of course, the, the future revenues from there, they will, they will earn their, their money back that way. But, um, but this is great because it, uh, it, it, it's, it's been put together. Um, this, is, uh, this is also the first part of a, a, a much larger plan. Um, the, the, the Nielsen well was originally uh, fracked with uh, water and sand uh, to, to, and, and, uh, and was tested. Uh, the, 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 uh, the, the, the well exhibited uh, what, what the, it's referred to in uh, colloquial terminology as shale-like response behavior, um, sharp increase in gas production followed by a corresponding sharp de decline over the following days. But the, the well then subsequently increased in production, building, building, building. And as of the, as of the start of this week, the well was producing 34,000 cubic feet of gas per day containing approximately 0.6% helium. So, so what, what uh, the Nielsen well has done, it's, uh, it's basically validated the, the fracking process. Um, and the sheer size of this field, as the company has referred to in, in, in its uh, announcements, uh, that there, there are many, many more uh, potential wells to work on and to develop uh, across the field. So, so if, if, if this is successful, which it looks very much as though it will be, um, then I think this is going to open up that field and lead to a real scale up of production, and it's yeah, it's a very exciting juncture. Why the share price hasn't re responded in Voyager is an absolute mystery. I mean, you know, we should be many times where we currently are, but that's the nature of the markets at the moment. So sooner or later, um, investors are going to cod on to this and realise that this is huge undervalued. This is a company that's now generating cash from helium cells. Um, it's uh, uh, and it's also sitting really. Um, on something that could potentially massively scale up and they could repeat this uh, the success with the Nielsen well many times over um, and certainly it's an existing field that's well known to contain uh, you know millions of barrels of, of, of lithium and of of, lithium, of helium um, and uh, and and so I think uh, uh, you know for the future um, that this it, it, it offers uh, enormous potential. And indeed, Nick uh, said in his statement that uh, conventional oil and gas theory is that well production declines over time, but the behavior of the Nielsen well, the fact it's been steadily rising since, uh, since coming onto production last month, is absolutely uh, remarkable. Um, and this, this frack uh, gives the company the ability to test a hypothesis, which, if it's successful, opens the route to more extended, uh, a more extensive drilling campaign across the Huguenin field that really has to date been largely overlooked. So, yeah, you know, there's a, a real scale of opportunity here. And, and, uh, and I think that there's, that with, with the share price as it is currently at 3.25p, there's a fantastic opportunity for investors to, to pick up this stock and, uh, and potentially, you know, potentially with all the usual caveats, 
um, we could be looking at a, at a real turn back again. Very possible, Alan. Very possible. But you're right. I mean, it's 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 rapid progress from Voyager, rapid shift from the from the CBD over to the, the helium here, and, and really getting into different wells and getting into to cash flow. Yep share price market not really responding but as i said we said at the start we're sort of seeing that across the board really at some point it will turn um and uh, that time is uh, probably nearer than than uh, than it has been for a while as we said at the start but let's finish off with talking about pool bag farmer then of course a company that we have talked about before probably for a few years certainly during the covid times but what's been going on with with pool bag well, Pool Bay Farmer, of course, uh, were spun out of the old Open Orphan, which, of course, is now H Fever, and H Fever is doing hugely well in its own right. You know, it's really blazing a trail. Um, and Pool Bay was spun out of H Fever with a market cap of about 50 million, um, uh, and it's almost it's sitting at almost exactly that now, 48 million market cap, share price 9.6p, um, and yet there there are several years of product development and uh, asset development uh, that simply are not reflected in the in, in the value of the company so so the company um, is is developing commercializing innovative medicines targeting diseases for the higher met medical needs um, and uh, on rare and orphan diseases um, the the company has a what, what it refers to as a capital light model that is to say it will invest and develop um, assets uh, uh, in its labs up to a certain point at which point it brings in it will bring in a major farmer such as Pfizer or Solvay or uh, or whoever to work with them to develop and commercialize and and distribute the product uh, it's notable because the, the the team over this year has been um, has 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 grown. Uh, the company bought in three executives from a company called Amrit Pharmaceuticals, and this team that have come in uh, took Amrit from a 50 million market cap in 2016 to a one point uh, a one point five billion dollar exit in 2023. Um, Jeremy Skillington, the chief executive himself, uh, also uh, also uh, worked at Ch- as chief executive of a company called Infozone, um, and that company was subsequently sold to Roche Pharmaceuticals for four hundred and fifty million dollars. So there's a team here with a track record of developing and building uh, assets and uh, and selling them on. So uh, so with the um, so, so with the particular model, the company has a number of assets uh, that it's developing. The, the flagship asset is, uh, uh, is called POLB001, which is a phase two ready cancer immunotherapy uh, uh, tr- and treatment for severe influenza um, using oral encapsulation ta- uh, technology. Also uh, targeting obesity with, uh, with uh, an agonist. Uh, and this is entering into clinics uh, uh, or has entered into clinics th- this year. The company is also working with partners, uh, Cyto Reason on the influenza asset, and also a company called One Three Biotech, uh, which is uh, resp- RSV or respiral signal uh, uh, virus. Um, and uh, and the the, uh, the assets are being progressed, and um, the testing so far has been very successful, particularly for PLB zero zero one, which has showed marked reduction in systemic and local inflammatory response. Um, the company has also expanded um, the, the POLB001 into oncology as well. So there are now s- uh, several new fields of potential for the for the asset to develop into. So uh, as we stand now, the, the company is valued, as I say, almost exactly at that entry point uh, onto AIM uh, a couple of years ago. Um, it has 10.1 million cash at the bank, so a very strong cash balance. Um, and... Uh, the, the company has assessed the opportunity for its, its flagship drug, PLB001. Uh, the, the market size of the, the market opportunity is estimated to be $10 billion plus. So huge potential here, run by a great team. Of course, Carl Friel, um, you know, is, is very much, very sort of, he's been very key to develop. He's, he's chairman of the company. Um, and uh, I believe there's huge potential to come, particularly now, POLB001 is at uh, phase two 
all ready for phase two testing, uh, clinical testing, and uh, phase two clinical testing will mean potential for a partnership or a sale, um, and of, of course all the potential upside that will bring with it. Okay, well thank you very much, Alan, for your time again this week, and do enjoy your biking to Norfolk, and we'll speak again uh, next week. Thank you, Mark. Have a great weekend. If you enjoyed this interview, then give us a thumbs up, a like or a retweet. Subscribe to us on YouTube or follow us on Twitter and hit that notification bell to be the first to know when we release new content. There's loads of great content on our website too, across all our programmes at stockboxmedia.com. Thank you for watching.